Deep brain stimulation, or DBS, is improving the quality of life for patients with Parkinson's disease and shows great promise for epilepsy and depression. Still, many questions remain about its efficacy, delivery, and side effects. I'm Cameron McIntyre, a neuroengineering professor at Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine. Successfully engineering deep brain stimulation technology requires a multidisciplinary approach. Our group is integrating imaging, neurophysiology, neuroanatomy, and computational modeling to increase our understanding of precisely how DBS works. Deep brain stimulation is a complex technology, and we're working to better engineer the next generation of these devices to help patients with Parkinson's disease. The next frontier is applying it to neuropsychiatric disorders with great hope for the future. While Dr. McIntyre explores electrical stimulation of the brain, my lab focuses on a new cellular therapeutic to alleviate neural disorders. I'm Paul Tizar of the Department of Genetics and Genome Sciences at Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine. My research team has discovered a novel technique which enables us to convert skin cells directly into the brain cell types damaged in multiple sclerosis and cerebral palsy. This technique termed cellular reprogramming allows us to convert skin cells, a readily accessible source of cells, into highly coveted neural cell types. These new cells can then protect neurons and restore function to the nervous system. Our initial studies have been successful in animal models and we are currently working to translate this technology to human patients. Our hope is that one day we'll be replacing drugs with cells to treat millions of patients who are suffering from debilitating diseases such as multiple sclerosis and cerebral palsy. Science is the desire to explore the unknown, and vision has been a passion of my entire life. I'm Chris Palczewski, Chair of Pharmacology at Case Western Reserve. Our research team is making exponential progress in understanding how vision works at the molecular level. Diseases like macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy cause blindness in thousands of patients every year. With the laser focus on the key questions, we are inventing and testing new drug therapies to prevent those common diseases. One treatment, currently in clinical trial, restored sight in blind dogs. This is similar to a condition affecting children. Blindness is one of the most debilitating and feared diseases. With simple treatment, there is a hope to prevent progression of those diseases, and in some cases, even to restore sight. Sometimes to advance a field, you've got to completely rethink the way you're doing things. That's what our research team did to develop a new MRI technique that will allow us to pinpoint diseases faster than ever before. I'm Mark Griswold, professor of radiology at the Case Western Reserve School of Medicine. This new method isn't just faster, it's more specific. In conventional MRI, we have a different stack of images and we can make an educated guess as to what's at each location in the patient. MRI fingerprinting will give us a specific identification of what's happening in each piece of tissue in one shot. We fully expect this new technology to help physicians identify diseases early when they're most treatable. I'm Dr. Jerry Silver, a professor in the Department of Neurosciences at Case Western Reserve University. My lab discovered a family of molecules that form in the glial scar that potently block regeneration after spinal cord injury. And over the last several years, we've developed a strategy to overcome those molecules. By a simple injection of a peptide systemically, we can promote regeneration and bring back an unprecedented amount of recovery in rats who have a model of spinal cord injury. Now we knew that we thought we had something interesting, but it wasn't until I was discovered by the Council to Advance Human Health in the School of Medicine that the full translational potential was revealed. The FCAW program helped us devise experiments that pushed us in the proper direction. Thanks to the support and guidance, we now have found a pharmaceutical company that shares our belief that we've discovered a novel strategy and potentially bring back an unprecedented amount of recovery in people with spinal cord injury. 